Hey everybody, it's Kevin from 3D Printed Props, and in today's video, we're gonna be working out something really fun. This is a Hawkeye trick arrow. This is the PIM arrow, the shrinking arrow, and this was a lot of fun because I modeled this guy from scratch because I wanted to add some electronics so that when you put the arrowhead onto the arrow and push down, it would light up. So you can see we've got a light in the front, the uh, all the little cutouts light up, Again, super fun to model, super fun to put together. You can actually get the files for this arrow along with a few other trick arrows we're gonna be doing in later videos over on my site, 3dprintedprops.com. Use the coupon code below to get 20% off of your files. So again, this was super fun. Really, really simple to print, simple electronics. There is a build list also in the description below. But right now, let's go behind the fake wall and let me show you how I put this thing together. So the first arrow I made was way too small and way too thin. The next one, way too big, way too thick. So I got the calipers out and got a little closer. But this back area here, I realized I wasn't going to be able to put an arrow through there. So I came up with this one. We got a bigger shaft, we got two parts, and then the inside, and that's printed with a clear resin that I tinted with just a simple resin tint. Again, everything I used will be in the description below. Now, as you can see, there are some imperfections, so we're going to sand those. Here we got some rough stuff, and we're going to use a 320, then a 400, and that'll really help take all the stuff out. Now, remember to wear a mask. Sanding resin stuff is really fine, and you don't want that in your lungs. So we're just going to go ahead and go through and sand all the pieces parts first with 320 then 400 now here You can really see see like the extra sort of white spots there That's where some resin dust accumulates into the areas where there were resin supports So you can really see what you're going to need to clean up afterwards maybe with a filler So I'm really happy with how that fits together I wash it thoroughly to get all the dust off and then I use this glazing compound and this stuff is really great if you want to just fill little tiny imperfections. You don't want to use it for huge things, but small stuff. Then I sand it down with a 400, and you can see super dusty again, wear a mask. So I'm using Vallejo Chainmail Silver, a little bit of water, and I'm just filling my airbrush up. Yes, I know, tiny reservoir, but I can't find the one with the bigger one. So I just mix it all up in here and give all the pieces just thin coats. I am wearing a mask. I have ordered some fans uh, and a little system to help clean this stuff up so it's not just blown around, but definitely wear a mask when you are using an airbrush for that fine particulate matter. Now it's electronics time. We had a battery, a switch, some LED and a few other electronics. So this is a momentary switch, push it, it's on, let go, it's off. We got a LiPo battery here. This piece of electronics helps you connect the battery to your electronics. This charges your battery. You just plug it in your computer and plug the battery in and it'll charge. And some inexpensive LED. And this is what we end up with. It goes from the battery to the breakout to the switch and then some LED. Now let's take a closer look how we wired this all together because that looks a little confusing. Okay, so we have the 3.7 volt litho battery. It goes to that little right angle breakout board. Now, mine looks a little different here in this drawing. It's because I used a, a switched version because I had a switched version. Uh, if you're gonna try this with the electronics, I'd probably get the one without a switch. It takes up less space, it's a lot smaller. Then we have the tactile switch and then we have some LED. Now, it's pretty simple. You can see right on that breakout board switch that it has a negative and a positive. So the positive goes to one corner of your switch. You can see that right there. Then you take the negative from the breakout and you bring it to the negative to one of the LED. And then from the opposite side of the positive, you take the another black or whatever color wires you want. Black is always probably easier to do. From the switch to the negative pole on the LED because it's smaller. That's how you know it's negative. And then from the positive pole on the LED, you go to the other positive pole and you finish your switch. Negative to negative. And then it's a question of testing it out. How does this thing look? The LED are too bright. So I'm going to actually shove a piece of diffusion material in here. Now, yes, it doesn't go all the way to the tip, but it doesn't really matter because that's covered. So now we start jamming the electronics in here. Uh, the one that's coming out the point area, that's of course the tip of the arrow. And I'm just going to sort of feed it in here. And it was a little tight, but I wanted it that way. And it doesn't come all the way through just with your finger here. So I'm going to use a little bit of a file pushing on the sides to make that go through. 
put the blue thing in, and now go ahead and just sort of get all those electronics in there. And like glue, I get a little crazy with the wires. All those wires could have been a quarter, you know, just a quarter of what they are. And I'm testing it often to make sure when I'm tucking things in there, I didn't loosen anything. Okay, so just a little bit of hot glue holds that switch in. And again, I'm super happy with the fit of this when I designed it. It goes in just by pressure and you don't have to put any glue on. You don't want to because you want to be able to get those pieces out so you can charge the battery. So let's test this. When we put the arrow through, it hits that switch. And yes, it lights up. It does exactly what it's supposed to do crazy happy with this design. Now let's put this cap on and we can glue this because again, to get the electronics out, we just pulled that sort of ribbed area in the back that the arrow's on to get the electronics out. Hold it in place and we are done. It's got some nice weight to it. I was really happy with that because that back part's almost solid and it just looks pretty sharp. And here it is all lit up. Hawkeye's Pym Industries Trick Arrow. Now that glowing effect when you put the arrow onto the arrow shaft looks super cool, but let's say you wanted to print this for yourself and you didn't want to worry about the electronics. Over on my site, 3dprinterprops.com, when you pick this up, or if you pick this up, you could also get it in a totally solid version that you can just paint, so you don't have to fool around with the electronics. Or you can you know, print it in multiple parts and still use a, a blue resin or a tinted resin to get that blue color on the inside. You don't need the electronics, uh, but you'll get both versions of the file over on the site. Now, like I said earlier, I'm going to be doing more trick arrows, some from the show, some I'm just sort of designing for fun, just, you know, from the comic books and just from ideas I'm having. And uh, they're really kind of neat to do because they're small, they're interesting, and uh, they're really super fun to print and then put together. Now, if you like this video and you want to see those other videos, go ahead and click like, subscribe, hit that little bell to know when new videos come up, and we'll be getting out more and more shortly, especially since there's so much crazy snow out there. I am going nowhere, except to hit the snowblower, which I am not looking forward to, but whatever. If you don't want to go outside, you want to watch videos, and you watch this one, I want to thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.